Hi, I'm Tom Glassman, and I've been photographing for well over 40 years. And I'm here with a few quick tips on how you can immediately start taking better photographs, whether you're an old pro or you're trying to master a new DSLR for the first time, or even if you only shoot with a cell phone. And the way we're going to do this is to look at two or three different photographs and discuss why they work, why they don't, composition, and more. My goal is to get you in and out quickly so you can spend more time shooting and less time watching me. So let's get started. Welcome back. As you can probably tell, it's Western dress up day in the office. Uh, you recall last episode, we all dressed as our favorite deconstructionist poet. Today, obviously the Western shirt, the matching Western fuzzy chaps. Hopefully it won't distract too much from what I'm trying to teach you. Um, but to get back to the core of what we're doing and why we're here, it's learning how to see. And when you see something, how to make a good photograph out of it. In this case, uh, and boy, I say that a lot. Um, what I was seeing were all these colorful umbrellas. I was at the beach in Maine, Old Orchard Beach, and I'm walking along the beach and there's this, they call it a snow fence. Um, but I keep seeing all these umbrellas and the fence is in the way and I don't really want to poke the camera through the fence and I didn't want to get on the other side of the fence and start shooting people and having them look uncomfortable. And I realized I could use the fence as an interesting layer uh, where I'd have one layer here of the fence, another of the umbrellas, <clears throat> and a third layer of the background going on. So what I did was to walk along until I found an area where I had the largest concentration of colorful umbrellas going from here and over to here. They would fill the frame. I focused right on the umbrellas, so these would be sharp. And I used a middle aperture because I didn't want the fence here to be sharp. I wanted to be blurry and get out of the way same with the grass and the sand dunes up front here. And I took this shot called At the Beach, and it looks almost like a painting. It's a straight photograph. But the idea here is I saw this, all the colorful things. Now, how can I work with that to make a photograph out of it? And this is what I ended up with. In the same mode of thinking. This is a rowboat and it's actually, it's in Cape Porpoise, Maine. It's in marsh grass, the tide's coming in, and this is the sky reflected in the water. And what caught my eye first, what I saw was this newly freshly painted rowboat. But there was a lot of garbage in the background. Uh, you know, I probably trailers and other boats that weren't that attractive. And there was really no way to isolate the boat and uh, really have that be the main subject of what was going on. So rather than give up on the shot, it was the new, it was a, it was in the spring. So the boats are painted. They're not weathered yet. It was brightly colored using a polarizer. I just um, was able to saturate the colors here. I moved in close. So I filled the frame and just made a nice abstract series of lines or layers. And this is one of the shots I took very, very, very early in my career as a photographer. And a friend who was an artist was looking at these shots, pulled this one out immediately and said, you should do something with this. And give, given that kind of encouragement, uh, I foolishly pursued it. And here I am today. Another image, where I guess we're going to stay nautical here. Another boat. I love being on the water, love boats. And this was looking down from a pier, sunlight hitting this sort of blue and purple boat. Again, you can't do the whole boat. There's all kinds of garbage in the water. There, it's next to the pier. There, It was a fresh paint. It's just really exciting, but there was nothing to make the image work. So again, uh, what caught my eye was the bright colors, fresh paint. And then I said, how do I make it work? 
you know, I saw something. Now, how can I make it into a photograph? So I'm zooming in close, again, using a polarizer. This black area here is actually the water. It's in the shadow of the pier. But again, it just makes a nice abstract. What an, another lesson here for you guys is um, notice I'm shooting vertical. A lot of images cry out for vertical. You have to turn your camera that way sometimes to make the shot work. If I tried to do it as a horizontal, I'd have to pull so far back to be so much other annoying stuff in the image to get the same dimensions here. And then you end up cropping it and you don't get as good a quality. So the lesson here is shoot vertical and pay attention to what catches your eye and move in close and fill the frame. Once again, this was uh, in Boston. This is the HMS Bounty. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier that I lived in the Navy Yard in Boston. And many years ago, they had something like almost 200 tall ships come through, which is pretty phenomenal. Whether this was part of that session or, or just on another visit. But you go down to the dock and you, you forget how brightly colored you know these ships were. And of course, up here, a lot of the scuppers were in red because... Uh, if all the blood flowing on the decks, they didn't, didn't want it to freak people out. So you had a lot of red paint so the crewmen would keep working, I guess, and not panic. Um, but if you're down in the dock, it's crawling with people. Uh, there are buildings in the background, skyscrapers, phone lines, building cranes. There's just not a lot of nice stuff to isolate this. So again, I liked the bright colors. I moved in close, made an abstract out of it. What caught my eye was this cumulative you know, grouping of bright colors and sort of abstract shapes. And uh, if, if you pull back too much more, then this loses importance. It's a lot of competing stuff and it doesn't have the same impact. So again, um, see what catches your eye try and make it work. And a lot of making it work is moving in close, filling the frame. And what you leave out is just as important as what you include. And breaking away from our nautical theme, uh, this is a, I think it's a uh, Freightliner uh, painted, it's probably a Mary Kay Freightliner. It's an 18-wheeler. It's this bright pink. You don't see a lot of these every day. I was passing by a truck dealership and I saw the pink and I stopped, asked permission to go in and take some shots. And really, if, uh, you know, it, it's hard to make this work. It took a long time. If you pull back, you know, down here, you can see a, you get a big black tire, which is not that attractive. If you pull back too much, you get a big black windshield. If you pull back too far, uh, you get all the buildings and the service bay in the background. And so the idea is what caught my eye? It was pink. Uh, I moved in close to make it unmistakable that it was part of a truck. Uh, you had the reflection here, the lights. But again, sticking with our theme on how to see and then how to make good photographs, the pink caught my eye. Now, how do I make it work? And what do I leave in? What do I leave out? Always paying attention to background, filling the frame. So that is the lesson there. This was at the State Fair. What caught my eye here um, was a bunch of young girls on horseback, and they were all on cell phones. And to me, that seemed like a kind of a fun image. And I moved in close, and I saw this particular close-up of her, her leg. And I asked if I could take her picture. And she said yes, and she's sort of puffing up her hair and all this. And I'm zooming in. I've got a 200 millimeter lens, so I'm sort of back far enough. And I'm isolating, again, the white against the black against this. So I have like all these different shades and textures and lines and patterns. Uh, that's not what caught my eye, but it's called working the shot. I like the cell phone idea, the kids on cell phones. I moved in close. I saw this. I'm always open to it. And remember I said earlier, you're always looking for patterns and shapes and colors. Well, here's patterns, here are shapes, here are colors, and that's what's going on there. So it caught my eye, and my job was to make it work as a photograph, 
Uh, throw the background out of focus here so it doesn't compete. And there you have it. Here again, another image. It's, it's a windmill. Coming out of Boston, you don't see a lot of these. This was actually on Nantucket. And not a great shot, but I don't have a lot of windmills. I said, you know, maybe I'll get a Dutch client someday or something. Regardless, I had to take the shot of the windmill. And what the first thing I had to do was decide what angle to take it from. Because any other angle, you wouldn't see all this and you'd see some pretty ugly background phone telephone poles, phone wires, that sort of thing. So I knew I had to shoot from this angle. I knew I had to leave room at the top. You don't want to cut off some of this sort of thing here. And to be able to get all this in, the particular lens I had, I didn't want to be up too close because I couldn't get it all in. So I had to move back. I had to stay in this kind of line of sight Luckily, there was this kind of fence here. So I, you'll notice this is straight up and down. Here's sort of a curvy line. It matches sort of this here. I've got a little bit of foreground entry. It gets out of the way. Your eye is brought up here. You come up to the top here, and there's you haven't cut the top of that off. So again, it's taking an image, being conscious of what you should leave in and how to treat it. And in this particular case, I'm thinking... Norman Rockwell, Andrew Wyeth, maybe those sort of cliche calendar shots you get in the 20s and 30s. It's what I call a postcard or calendar shot. Um, it's probably never going to go into a gallery or, or something like that. But it's the kind of quiet little slice of life country shot that, uh, you know, if you have a chance to take it, it's very charming and it's nice and might make a nice greeting card. Another image here. And I don't know if we've seen this one or not. This is in Santa Fe. I call this Santa Fe sled. What caught my eye was actually everything going on here. Uh, I love old cars, so I saw this. I saw the patterns and colors almost matching what's going on here. And then since Santa Fe is so high up, the polarizer turns the sky into a nice blue. I had to take the shot. I thought the Chamber of Commerce left it out there just as a gimmick to get photographers, you know, hooked. I came back the next three, four days, it was gone. It was just fortuitous happenstance. The moral here is if you see a shot, take it because it's going to be gone shortly. Um, but again, what I saw was an old car. Then I saw this and we're talking layers and patterns. Here's a pattern or layer here that almost mimics this, and then I use this contrasting color to cut it off. So that's how you make a photo out of that. Here again, um, I was at a farm stand, and this tractor was out in front. It was in the sunlight, and it was a bright red tractor, a yellow wheel. It caught. That's what caught my eye. And but. Again, you couldn't shoot it from the front where there was more red because you had all the cars in the parking lot. and It was not that attractive. And I realized uh, there were cardboard cutouts of fruits and vegetables in the background. So I lined up uh, the shot with a telephoto lens to get a little bit of the hubcap here, the tire, the red here, and this color here. And I let the wood, it was in shadow. The tractor was in sunlight. This was sort of not so much. And it became a nice abstract. Again, it's an example of how to see, how to keep training yourself to look for unusual uh, instances and how to compose. Again, you're filling the frame corner to corner, nothing extraneous, and it's, uh, it's fun. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye. My young computer savvy assistant reminds me that it's really important to ask for likes and subscribes. But I would also love some comments below discussing what we're diving into and what you might want to see in the future. With all that out of the way, thanks for watching and thanks for your patience. See you next episode.